Hey guys, Joey C here. Today we're going to take a look at plosives. We're going to look at how they're made, why they happen inside of this microphone thing that's in front of you. Then we're going to look at how to prevent them from happening in the first place. And then if they happen to make their way into your mix, we're going to go into Audacity and we're going to show you just how to remove them. So stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this. Alright, so in order to understand what a plosive is, we first have to understand what a microphone is. So here's a really quick crash course. This is a microphone. You're looking at one here and this cool drawing that I made on the screen. The microphone is made up of the body, it's got shielding on side of it, uh, so you can't damage anything on the inside. And that thing you don't want to damage on the inside of that is called the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a disc of material that transfers this this audio that we're creating from our voice or an instrument, and it turns it into a signal. So here's an illustration. As you sing or as you speak or as your instrument actually produces sound, that, that, vi that vibrations from those sound waves are going into that diaphragm and they are going through whatever signal chain you happen to have into your interface or directly into your computer and ultimately into some kind of digital audio workstation or DAW to get recorded. That's how that works. So when a plosive occurs, it happens a little bit different because it's not necessarily just clean sound waves, but it's actually kind of an overload scenario. When a plosive happens, that usually happens because of the sound of P. That's going to be most of your problem if you're a voiceover artist like me. When you have a P sound, such as Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers, if you hit directly onto that diaphragm with that burst of air that comes out of your mouth, then that's going to cause that vi diaphragm to shake violently. And when it does that, that's going to distort the signal, and you're going to end up with not only bad audio, but your diaphragms, it doesn't like that either. So don't do that. Here's an example of what that looks like in Audacity. This is the phrase I've just actually spoke this into just a little bit ago. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. And specifically, as I went through this, you can see these are normal peas. And as I went towards the end of this, I really got direct onto the diaphragm with those peas, and I intentionally caused a plosive. So let's go take a listen to what that actually sounds like in the DAW. All right, so here we are back in Audacity and we have our audio that contains plosives. So first things first, let's play it so that you can hear it. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. As you noticed, towards the end of that audio, as soon as we get over into these really high peaks, that is where the plosives are. And that's something that we don't wanna hear. So how do we prevent that from happening? Well, there's a couple of different things. So there are things like this. This comes, comes actually came with my microphone. This is a Rode NT1. It's a fantastic microphone and I recommend it highly. It, it literally plugs in here and it disrupts a lot of the plosive sounds that come from it. I'm just gonna take it off of here for now because that is directly in my face and I can't quite see you very good. Um, and then there are also other options out there such as uh, windscreens that look like this. This is a really, really cheap Nady SPF-1. Um, this was my very first windscreen, and it worked great, and it still works great. It's just really big, and sometimes it's hard to see your script through it. So um, these are ways to handle that. And there are also other things out there. Let me get another one over here. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, this is uh, some kind, sometimes referred to as a clown nose. This is on my uh, Sennheiser. And all of this foam, you've probably seen this uh, at outdoors when, when somebody's got like, uh, you know, one of those, oh gosh, a, a handheld microphone. And they usually have windscreens on it. This is, effectively functions like a windscreen. It prevents any of those uh, harsh plosives or any type of extra wind noise coming in to get to that micro uh, that diaphragm inside of there so those are some manual ways that um, you can actually stop plosives from from reaching your diaphragm 
And then also there's other techniques that you can do too. So let's look at some of those. All right, so other techniques. Typically, when people think of recording into a microphone, you think of just having a direct approach. That is somebody looking directly at a microphone. This is, and it's kind of hard angle here, but looking directly at the microphone and then speaking directly at it. And that is usually what most plosives, the reason why most plosives exist is because you're just shooting that directly into the diaphragm. And that's not necessarily good. It's not necessary to do that. These microphones are made to pick up, especially if you've got a nice cardioid pattern, that's going to pick up a, a really great area around this microphone. You're not going to notice much difference around that. So to help with plosives, uh, you can actually get yourself position yourself kind of at an angled approach where the diaphragm, which is this part here, is slightly offset and you're kind of speaking at it at a slight angle. This allows any type of plosive to go almost kind of bounce off and not cause nearly as much disruption to the diaphragm. And then if you wanted to take it even further, you can angle that diaphragm and you can actually speak offset, which I've actually been doing for most of this video so far, where you're not actually directly into the microphone, but you're speaking at an offset. Is I'm speaking right here directly at you. This microphone is doing a great job of picking me up quite well. Um, so take a look at those. And in another situation too, um, if you actually mount this microphone overhead, you can give it almost a, a tilted microphone, like a tilted uh, off axis like this. And that allows you to have the same thing. You're not speaking directly into that microphone and it's not getting plosives. So a couple of techniques for you to check out. Let's go and actually see what we can do to fix that in Audacity now. All right, so here we are back in Audacity again. Let's go ahead and play this one more time so you can really hear that plosive. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Okay, it's obviously there. Um, so what is that plosive made of? When we take a look at it, we can actually analyze that. Let's go ahead and look at that. Click on Analyze, Plot Spectrum, and you can see most of that plosive is made up of this below 100 hertz frequency. That is the cause of the air rushing into that diaphragm. It's causing it to rattle like crazy and producing a super low frequency. So pop quiz, what can take away that low frequency? Well, if we go into effects and we go to our filter curve, we can actually apply what's you know lovingly called an 80 hertz roll off. So here's my 80 hertz roll off. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Um, right around 80 hertz, I have basically nosedived everything below that. So I'm reducing the, the level that is happening under 80 hertz. So let's apply that. Boom. You can see what that did. I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times. Here's with it applied. Here's with it not applied. Again, here's with it applied. So... One quick play with it not applied so you can hear it. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Pretty plosive. Not, this is not plosive, with the 80 hertz roll off applied. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. So there you have it. That is some pretty clean audio. A very quick fix for something that happens to get in there. Now, I would recommend that if you see a plosive happening as you're recording something, I would highly recommend that you go and re-record that. Not all of the things are going to clean up nearly as easy as this. So, so you can use this if you're in a, if a place where you've already recorded the thing and you can't get back into the booth to do something, that's okay. If you're in the middle of it and you see that spike happen, if you see something that looks like this as you're recording that piece of audio, I highly recommend that you just fix it in the moment because fixing it, pre is just a lot better than fixing in a post. So there you have it, guys. This is how you fix that. These are the techniques that you can use to avoid getting plosives into your mix. Let me know what you think about this. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, and let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Thanks, guys. Bye.
All right, guys, before I go, I left you a little Easter egg hunt. I left plosives throughout this video and I didn't fix them on purpose. Well, I kind of did. Uh, in the left channel, you will hear the fixed audio just as we've done inside of this Audacity tutorial. And then in the right channel, I've actually let them exist as is. Go back and listen, look for the green dot in the bottom right hand corner, and let me know what you think. See you guys.